All right, folks, welcome back. This is Yankees Unloaded, episode 153. And it's after the Yankees won 3-2 to take game three of the ALDS. What does that mean? We're going to get started and you know give you our thoughts on that. We got a fun show for you guys. We'll be talking about, first off, the starting pitching from the guy that I said I would very much want on the hill, Clark Schmidt. I thought he pitched really well. The bullpen has been incredible. Giancarlo Stanton has a legacy game if there ever was one. And the Yankees are knocking on the door one win away from moving on to the ALCS where they would either face the struggling Guardians right now who are down 2-1 to in the series or the Detroit Tigers, both of which the Yankees won the season series against. It's going to be a game five or game four battle, excuse me, between, uh, wow, I can't even talk right now. Uh, <laughs> I told you, Garrett Cole, good Lord. I'm trying to do like the intro thing and then I just go too far. Garrett Cole is taking on Waka. So we're going to talk about all that. Gary, they had to have this game. I, I understand there are two more games after this if you don't win it, but you really just want to end this thing. It doesn't have to be in the Bronx. You don't need to have the celebration in the Bronx. Just bring it on home to the Bronx, play game one in the Bronx, but they, they need to get this win, uh, especially they had to get it in game three. Yeah, could you imagine if we had lost this game? Which I I guess doesn't really matter because you don't have to worry about what would have happened if it didn't happen, right? But yeah, in this situation, we'll the Yan- right, the Yankees were, I know they were over but they were 0 for 6 with runners in scoring position. And we had a conversation about what should happen with Giancarlo Stan, right? Whether or not Jason Dominguez, we predicted that Jason Dominguez would make his way into this series in this game, right? And a lot of that was because Giancarlo Stan wasn't hitting. He's obviously not fielding. He's your DH. But there was always the idea that he could run into one and change a game. That's why he plays, ladies and gentlemen, Everybody, for the most part, agreed. Yes, I would like a overall baseball player, somebody who can hit a single, can run the bases hard, can run out an infield single, you know, they can steal a base, score from first, do all this athletic stuff that can help a team win. But, Jake, this is why you said there's no wrong answer to the Dominguez-Stanton equation. There are pros and cons to each side. This is the pro. You go 0 for 6. You leave 11 guys on base. Aaron Judge, who hit a couple balls hard today, goes 0 for 4. Doesn't give you any production whatsoever. And all the while, Giancarlo Stan goes 3 for 5, drives in 2. That's all it is. He can drive in everybody standing at the plate. There you go. That's why he plays. And you can watch this dude play 10 games in a row. He'll do nothing. And you'll sit there and wonder, what in God's earth is Aaron Boone thinking why does this guy play he chops a ground ball he's practically walking over to first and Bob Costas has talked about it a few times other broadcasts have also talked about it John Carlos not it's not a lack of hustle he is deliberately running that speed because he could get hurt if he runs any harder even though we saw him steal a base today which was amazing but this is the bailout plan that the Yankees have sitting in the middle of their order in John Carlos Stan. He could show up, you do nothing well all day offensively. And yet this player can just completely change a game. He did exactly that. And now Kansas City's looking at this saying, okay, Michael Waka in a game where it's an elimination game. We may go home. The Yankees have now teed this up where Garrett Cole is your starter on the road in Kansas City. This is why we pay him. Now, whether or not you guys feel confident about what he'll do, that's a different story. But we don't pay a guy $36 million a year, $360 million over the course of this contract that eventually will be turned into a 10-year deal at $400 million. You don't give away these type of contracts if you don't, at the very least, expect them to perform at this level. He has to perform. You saw Clark Schmidt. He didn't really give us a ton of length. I didn't expect a ton of length, Jake. To be honest with you, I think you mentioned that he was pretty good. He was living on the corners, gave up a few runs, no big deal. But this was a must-win game for the Yankees. They had to have it. And I'm not even trying to 
hype myself up that they didn't win this game the way I wanted them to win by breaking out offensively. We just needed a win at the end of the day. We got it. I'll take it a step further, Gary. These are the type of games that they would lose in previous series. I mean, you talk about That's four fair. hits, you know, four hits. Soto gets, doesn't get a hit. Judge doesn't get a hit. Well strikes out three times. It wasn't looking good. Um, it was looking like one of those, well, Kansas City gets last licks. They're going to walk it off, right? It, that's how it felt. And then Stanton took all of the emotion out of the game when he hit that home run in the eighth. I think really that felt like, I don't know why, but that felt like an insurmountable lead, three to two. In you this can type hear of a game. mouse fart in that stadium. It, it changes the <laughs> entire complexion of what's happening because you have to remember most postseason runs it's like two outs ball slapped to right field two strikes another ball slapped out there guy goes first to third and now you're wondering okay runner in scoring position are you going to come through or are you not we saw it in plenty other series in baseball so that's the way baseball is played usually and we've got this player who's this uh kind of this get out of jail free card and kansas city had that place rocking and then it just changes Right. One swing of the bat completely changes everything. And thankfully for us, he was on the field. We said he shouldn't be out there. I think a lot of people who watch our show also were like, I don't really know. He had one hit prior. Not sure that the idea of what Jason Dominguez was capable of, we'd like to see that. But now after the game in hindsight, thank goodness Aaron Boone put him in. I don't know any other way to describe the situation of thank goodness John Carlos Stanton played whether or not you think he should play next game. I mean, of course he should be now that he just did that, but I don't know. There are a lot of guys in our lineup that are struggling. I think I know you wanted to talk about Anthony Volpe got on three times. I believe today. Yes. Yeah. Three times he was running the bases. I, I know he threw the ball away and that obviously is something I think my mom texted me about that, but yeah, the Yankees had to play, I can't even say a perfect game. They needed a bailout of some sort. You watch this lineup today. Glaber Torres didn't get it, didn't do anything really. He reached base once via walk. There were a lot of walks in this game. And Jake, I would venture to say this is the game plan for Kansas City, is that you need to dare the Yankees to get the big hit. It don't worry about walking a guy don't worry about getting a guy in first and second and creating traffic it seems like kansas city's kind of buying into the fact we're going to nibble all series and force them to take a walk and get the big hit we walk nine times today you would expect a team that walks nine times to score more than three runs but we didn't right so it seems like that's a game plan that kansas city is deploying it is working because we're not scoring we're the technically i'm not sure if we surpassed arizona but we're at the very least a top two offense in baseball. We don't look like it right now, but thankfully we we scored more than the other team tonight. Yeah, and I, I want to add on to the walk, uh, you know, ideology there because mm -hmm. I do think while it can be their game plan, it can also be kind of bottled up. I, I don't think it's always talked about fairly. I think the reality of it is, Gary. Look, you know, these walks are just as good as getting on base with a base hit. Um, but I would say they're better because the the reason behind that is because now X amount of pitches, you know, at least a minimum of four pitches, you have now added to that pitch count. So I got to give hats off to Volpe for the day he had getting two walks, getting a hit, getting a run, really nice diving grab that I don't know, Costas was somewhere, probably where I was at the beginning of this show. Like where I just How disappointed was where Bob I was. Costas? I, I just, I don't know. And then, Oswaldo Cabrera, three walks in this game. It, it's a it's a sign that he is. I understand he's hitting two hundred. Like batting averages aren't going to look great, or they're going to look really good because it's such a small sample size. Like what we're seeing over in Kansas City, it's a small sample size. But now Witt has had twelve at bats. Now Witt's hitting one eighty two. You know, okay, right. I have an idea, right? But with the Yankees right now, it, like Glaber's hitting 100, but he's got an 800 OPS. Like it's it's one of those weird things where, you know, this early on, you're not really going to get the most out of it. So I'm not too worried about the batting averages. I just wanted to give Cabrera some credit. 
Cabrera's hit a home run in the postseason before. We know that. But Cabrera struck out a lot the postseason before. Okay. Oh, in yeah. 2022. Yep. And he is just such a different hitter. He's so much more disciplined. He's confident. And it's almost like this inner arrogance that you see the baby face and you see the way he's always got a smile on his face. You wouldn't expect it. But I feel like he has this inner arrogance that, like, and I'm not saying he is Derek Jeter, but that's what made Derek Jeter like great. Like he, you could just tell. He's like, he he knows when he goes up there, he's gonna do something. And I think it's Cabrera's kind of yeah. And you, you have a guy at the bottom of the order it, it, hitting eighth, and he's going up there and walking three times in, in a meaningful postseason game. I, I think stuff like that needs to be talked about. Uh, so that's why I wanted to highlight that. And then Jazz Chisholm, uh, he showed some inner arrogance, but he showed that a little bit. It wasn't inner. <laughs> he actually threw it out there. It was like, yeah, they got lucky. Uh, you know, we'll get them next week or next time. Or I whatever. loved what was said. I absolutely. I, can I also, because I know you wanted to talk about this. I want to say yes. one thing. I don't mm-hmm. like they got lucky. Okay. And okay. I know you probably don't like that, that part of it. Right. I like the sentiment but I don't like they got lucky. You got to give a team credit for winning in the postseason. one, two right. luck. Isn't real. <laughs> Everything has a reason. Like you've brought up before on this. I don't believe in luck. I believe in winning and losing. <laughs> it's, it's that yeah. simple. And right. you know what that kind of reminds me of? Actually, this is the exact same thing that they continue to say. This is their locker room. It's probably why they don't have a championship. The San Francisco 49ers. How come every time something happens where they lose and you have a guy in the, uh, you know, the locker room, whether it's the Amador Lenore or Debo Samuel, like, ah, they got lucky. Oh, we know we're better than them. So I don't love that, but I don't think jazz took it to that level. I think he was kind of like, yeah, you know, like we're going to get back out there. We feel confident. And it's a status report from a locker room. That's a bunch of NPCs and doesn't answer questions anyway. So the fact that we had jazz Chisholm come out and say what we were hoping to hear, I'm all for that. Yeah. And I think Michael K also talked about this is that Meredith has to ask people questions in that Yankees locker room. And it is a lot of, well, you know, we're just gonna, we're just gonna put one foot in front of the other. It's just, we're going to do our absolute best. We got to be ready for tomorrow. I don't want to hear those stupid interviews. They're boring. <laughs> They're not fun. They've never been enjoyable. And then all of a sudden, you put a mic in a player's face who we already know is outspoken, and he's not going to say something off the wall and be rude. No, he is telling you essentially to diagnose what Jazz Chisholm is saying here is they won't do it again. I'm venturing on the fact that that won't happen again. He's putting pressure on himself. This is somebody who's taking accountability. And I understand it was said in a wonky way, right? It was not politically correct. The best thing he could have said was we made some mistakes, which he did eventually say in his latter comments. But I'll tell you, if you wanted some PC answer of, well, I'm just going to try really hard. And we felt like we left a couple guys on second and third base and we've got to come through, obviously, both teams have to win. Kansas City is a really good team. If you needed to hear that to be happy about Jazz Chisholm, then don't trade for Jazz Chisholm because that's this is who he is. He doesn't care how things are going to sound. All that matters is do his teammates have his back? Does he have his teammates' backs? Is he going to be accountable? Is he going to perform? Right? And as of now, today he went 0 for 4, right? The key thing here is, is he doing things to help the Yankees win? And the answer is yes. He is helping the Yankees win. I don't care what he says in the media. What I like about this message, and you're absolutely right, the the idea of saying, oh, well, they're lucky. Yeah, it could have been said better. But I will tell you, if you just put it aside of the way it was said and just try and understand what he's actually saying there, I think that would go a long way. And he's essentially saying, we're the team, we're the better team. And I don't think they're going to do that again. So when we show up to a game three, right? Or is this take takes game four? Yeah. uh, Today was game three. Today was game three. You end up winning game three, right? He's essentially saying, I'm willing to be the villain here. I'm willing to be the villain. So much so. And and I'm going to read, I'm going to read a quote for you. And I rarely ever curse. So remember, this is Jazz Chisholm saying this, so this is not me. 
he said, and this is after the booze started from the Kansas City crowd, he said to Salvador Perez, who was obviously sitting behind the plate, he said, I love this shit. This is exactly what I told Salvi, right? So he says, it gets my juices flowing. It gets me going, okay? And then eventually they say, who went 0 for 4? But he played a clean third base. I'm hearing the loud noises and everyone's everything is going in my head. I've never seen anybody boo a bum. True. That's a great If this was point. a total bum, then we wouldn't be having this conversation. We just wouldn't. Well, <laughs> you have seen uh, people boo bums, but normally not on the opposing team. <laughs> No, like exactly. Yankee, like Yankees fans will boo. Uh, we will boo a bum or two at Yankee Stadium. Yeah. It will not be like if, for example, if some random player who's hitting two o two. Well, I guess that's not true because we did boo. What's his name? Um, was it Jose Sirius or Syria from Tampa? Siri? Oh yeah. Well, he yeah. It was like he's an ass. He hit a home run. Stuff. He was hitting two hundred, and we were we were booing. So I, I guess. The statement's not exactly true in the moment, but I will tell you, I enjoy the fact that he's Miles not Straw. shying away from pressure because you know what really is happening, guys? When they give you those answers after the game, we're really going to try. When they go put a mic in Aaron Judge's face and he gives you that NPC, as you put it, answer, they're avoiding extra pressure that is unnecessary. That's the entire purpose and this is also why Aaron Boone showed up in the media and said, well, I mean, he didn't exactly mean it like that. That's why it was said. He's trying to relinquish pressure. The Yankees don't need to do that. Just go play. Just go play. Say whatever the hell you want. What really matters is are you going to perform or are you not? Today they did. And they go back and they're going to the hotel and back to Kauffman Stadium to hopefully win this game and move on to the championship series. No, I, I get that. I, I think, uh, you know, obviously you would have liked to have a blowout win and everything, and I get that. I think a lot of people are still kind of bummed. Hey, this offense hasn't been what I was hoping for, but I can't stress it enough. Going back to game one, I don't care. I do not care. If they win the rest of the postseason, who gives a rip how they do it? doesn't have to be a conventional way. Now, would it be fun to watch some home runs from Aaron judge? Yes. Would it be fun to have seven runs scored in a gate where you just dominate? Sure. But that's not what's happening right now. And they're two one in the series and they're a game away from going to the ALCS playing one of the easier ALCS opponents that they've had in their playoff history. The last it will not be close. I, I mean, this people need to understand something. This is, and I mean, no disrespect to the Tigers. I mean, no disrespect to the Guardians. I mean, no disrespect to the Royals. But you're telling me that the Yankees have to beat the Royals one more game and then they get either the Tigers, well, it sure looks like they'll get the Tigers, who. They literally were sellers at the deadline because they themselves didn't believe that they'd make the playoffs. Or you get the Guardians who have no offense to speak of right now. No. Since so, the break, they couldn't score. So I guess my thing is people keep talking about that too. Like, oh, I, I hope we get the Tigers because aside from Scooble, who does well against the Yankees, they have nobody. Well, I don't care who they get because the reality is they don't have the Golden State Warriors-esque Astros. That's the reality. That's who's been in their way. When you go and you look at, oh, man, it's such a shame that, like, you know, Drew Brees didn't have more Super Bowl rings or, you know, Aaron Rodgers. Or Why do you think that is? It's because Tom Brady and the New England Patriots were a dynasty. It's right. why like, Golden State, we keep talking about Golden State. They're a dynasty. It's why the Astros, all these great teams, all these great players, they never won a ring. Do you know why? Because the Astros exist. Re regardless of the cheating stuff, and I'm so over that, I will not even begin to talk about that. The Astros have dominated the AL. Like, they have eliminated the Yankees five of the last nine times. Come That's pretty on. Significant. So now 
This is the opportunity. And you are one win away from beating the Royals, moving on to uh, Yankee Stadium, and getting a chance to kick the teeth in, whether it's the Tigers or the Guardians. And to me, this is a team that's bullied the Guardians in the past, recently, 2022. And I think they have some unfinished business with the Tigers because I think last time I checked, the Tigers knocked the Yankees out. It was... uh, Robinson Cano was walking to first on the final ground ball. That's what I remember. I don't know if they have played since, but I'm pretty sure at Comerica Park, the uh, the Yankees lost the last playoff matchup to the Tigers. So there's some revenge there. Um, Do you want so, me to yeah. give you the politically correct answer here? The anti-Jazz Chisholm answer that they give you? Well, I mean, the Tigers and the Royals and the, the Guardians, they deserve a ton of respect, and we've just got to put one foot in front of the other and go win the games in front of us. What a, what a dumb, pointless exercise to talk to players, managers, owners, GMs. I don't know why we talk to people. They give us those answers and we go, so humble. People do this so often. They're just so humble. No, we're not disrespecting the Royals or the Guardians or any of these opponents. There's a reason that people are covering these teams the way that they are. You're comparing the teams that we're coming up against with the teams that we could have faced and the teams that we have faced in the past. This never has ever meant we cannot lose to Kansas City. We cannot lose to Cleveland. Of course you can lose to these teams. Philadelphia just got sent home by the New York Mets. Do you think they came into the series thinking, oh yeah, we're the Mets have zero chance to send us home. Of course they thought they could send them home. Absolutely they thought that. But it doesn't just because you lose doesn't mean you wrote someone off. No, it just means you lost. So that's why Jazz Chisholm doesn't give a rip what he tells you guys in the media. He doesn't care because he knows he's either going to show up and play and we're going to boo the hell out of them immediately if they don't win. And people are probably going to lose their jobs. We're probably not the important people, but someone's going to get in trouble for losing. And so he knows it's bad if we lose anyway. And then if we win, all these comments, I'm just going to look really good and I'm going to look really honest and that will be respected regardless. It'll definitely be respected by me. I enjoy it. So as this goes on and into this series, we now have, I would say most of the pressure is still on us. I want to be perfectly clear about that. And and in this situation, we have to remember what's actually in front of us because we talk about that a lot and it is a Garrett Cole start on the road. Okay. I'm much more confident about this start than I think a lot of people are. Some people, a lot of people, right, are looking at what could go wrong. I'm trying to look at this as a glass half full situation and what can go right. Because you have to remember, if Garrett Cole dominates this start, it sets us up for the rest of the entire postseason. Because now we go into the championship series where we're dealing with seven games. We also don't have to go back to Yankee Stadium, which I know people like to use it as a lifeline to which we earned. But I will tell you, Jake, do we really want to see a winner take all game at Yankee Stadium? It would be you don't have momentum. You don't have you have all the pressure in the world. And Kansas City will be the team playing with no pressure. We don't want that. We need to go win this game. I agree. The only way that you want to see that is if you lost game three, you win game four, you have the momentum going back to Yankee Stadium. That's Correct. something. But that would mean that you lost with your ace to Waka again. I think the Yankees have an advantage because I think the thing that had given them fits was that they hadn't seen Waka a ton. And to just go, you know, X amount of months or years and then see a pitcher and he gets the best of you. Well, now you get to see him again the, the first four games of this series. So I think he's at a disadvantage. I think that's kind of that whole element of surprise, if you will, because you like, I thought Lugo pitched really well, but none of these guys are throwing like a perfect game or anything against it. You know, and that, I think that's the thing is that the, while the Royals have a really good one, two, three punch. And of course, when you look at the, the way like they've, you know, historically gone up against the Yankees lineup, you'd say, yeah, that's pretty dominant, but it's not the worst thing we've ever seen. It's not like Dallas Keuchel in the wild card one game, 
you're like, oh, this game's over. Tanaka's going to give up one run, eight innings pitched, and he'll get the loss. And then sure enough, that's exactly what happened. One nothing. Right. Wanted to uh, bring this up because I was very curious. So, you know, me behind the scenes, uh, I did look this up. The Yankees have never beaten the Tigers in a playoff series. Really? Well, I mean, yep. how often have we played them? The last three times, which are the only three times, 2006, okay. 2011, 2012, they've lost all three. 2006. Okay, so that's like the Curtis Granderson Tigers in 06. Yeah, 06, they lost three to one in the divisional okay. series. Then in the 2011 ALDS, they lost three to two. And the 2012, they lost in the ALCS sweep for uh, oh well those tigers teams were nasty in 11 and 12 those are like the miguel cabrera victor martinez like jose guillen those are really placido polanco though and then of course you had justin verlander and scherzer and all those guys Andy ball sanchez those were really good teams i can deal with losing when you're talking about all-time great teams and that team i they i think they went and lost to san francisco that year in the world series so the way I'm looking at it is that if we go lose to a historically great team, am I going to be pissed off? Yeah, I'm going to be pissed. It sucks, <laughs> right? Because I think the Yankees should be the team that is no longer looking at their opponent and saying, we need to respect all these guys. Respect? Of course you show up to the field with respect. You're the Yankees. Build a team where you show up to the yard and say, yeah, we're the, we're the baddest on the field, period. And we're going to come out and beat you. We don't care what people are saying in the media. We're just going to show up and handle our business. But the way we are now is we're kind of looking at the field and saying, okay, well, the the runway is now clearing. To be quite honest with you, Jake, you actually said this. I agreed with you. I don't care about the runway. I don't. I don't care who we play in the ALCS. I didn't care if it was Houston. I actually told you before the postseason started, if we face Houston, at the very least, you feel like we're battle tested at some point right? The better opponents that we face. If the Yankees, you mentioned the Yankees will eliminate the Yankees. If they go home, it'll be because of them. It will not be because Houston spun a gem or Detroit's unbelievable uh, rotation shut us down. No, it'll be none of those things. It'll be because Aaron judge was hit 110. It will be because John Carlos Stanton didn't make any impact whatsoever. And then we show up to tonight's game John Carlos Stan makes his name in his presence felt immediately, right? Huge, huge game. And frankly, this is what we pay these guys for. We pay them to be a Yankee, to be the hero, to be productive. It's exactly what happened. And, and frankly, I didn't care what Kansas City did. I really didn't. That's why we don't really talk a ton about what our opponents do. The Yankees are the better team. But as you saw in that Philadelphia series, how good your team is and playing team builder, that only matters in like fantasy football hardly. It does not matter. You need to go out and perform. You have to play. And a lot of times Yankees have gone in a series where me personally, I thought we had a better team than some of those Houston teams, those really good Astros teams. I thought we were better and we didn't perform. The numbers suggest it, right? Some of our better players didn't give us an output whatsoever. So I try and focus a little bit less on who's across from us and focus internally. Because if we do that, I think we'll get better results. And that's why I like some of the players speaking out about, I'm just going to get it done myself. I agree a hundred percent. I don't really, I don't care who they play. I don't care what the history is. Um, I do find it fascinating that if they go to the World Series, it's going to be either the Mets, Dodgers, and Padres, who they've beaten all three of those teams. They don't... I don't think they lost to the Padres. I know they didn't lose to the Mets. Um, and they beat the Dodgers eight of the 11 World Series. So, you know... Who do you want to see, by the way? <sighs> it's got to... I, I know we don't want to root for the Mets. I get that. But... I almost feel like, how do we not have the best chance to win? We don't usually play well against the Mets. That's the issue. And oh, then yeah. Rooting against the Mets there, you're essentially rooting for San Diego or the Dodgers. Uh, I'm not really rooting to play the Padres. <laughs> I'm really not. So, ideally, you want to face 
the lesser of the three teams, but you need to play the team that you'll probably play the be the best against. I would say based on their roster, I'm rooting to play the Dodgers. I don't I don't know what it is. I feel like if the Yankees play the Dodgers, we're going to handle them. That's the way I feel about it. But we have to get there, of course. Yeah, I I, I don't know. I don't want to say because I feel like I, I've said this before. Be like, oh yeah, I definitely don't want to play. And then this team is the one that knocks you out. It's uh, look it, at you with the MPC politically correct answer. No, no, no. You don't want to jinx it. it. <laughs> well, I'll tell you. Well, okay. So I don't believe in superstition. Um, I'm gonna say right now the Mets are probably the one team that you don't want to play because they're the hottest team and they're the they team that are. essentially came out of the play-in game and now have all the momentum in the world. Mm -hmm. And it's also baseball because again, football it's one game, basketball one game. Unless it's the NBA, then it's a series. But when you talk about those one games, it's not even the one game that bothers me, Gary. It's the home field advantage. Like that That's matters. Understandable. So the Mets, if it goes to seven, they still have three games at City Field. That's enough, right? I would say so. And I just Those feel like it'll be a billion dollars. Oh yeah. Well, yeah, they're trying to, you know, rack up the dollars so they can afford Juan Soda. Who, the Mets? Yeah. <laughs> Well, I mean, nobody – hey, this is something that hasn't been brought up enough. You remember that conversation everyone was saying, well, the Mets just stink, so they'll never be able to get Juan Soto because people were saying, well, you can't just throw money at them. Well, here they are winning. So Yeah, this is probably I don't think the you worst could use that case either. scenario. This well, is worst-case scenario. Well, <laughs> what happens <laughs> if they, the, the two teams go to the World Series and uh, Juan Soto is pretty much just like – because you know the reports will be flying because camp will leak it. It'll be like, yeah, it's uh, he's actually just signed between the Yankees and Mets. And uh, it's like winner take all, including Soto. <laughs> right. So it won't it no matter when the Mets lose now, I will tell you this. The Mets are in the National League Championship Series. They're going head to head with either the Dodgers or the Padres. Everyone's going to be watching that series. It's the Mets, Dodgers and Padres. Those are huge markets. Everyone's watching it. So yeah. this idea that Juan Soto would be going to the Mets and just dealing with Steve Cohen, basically just being hanging around, right? Lindor, a bunch of dudes hitting 230. They're not winning games. No, those players, Lindor was unreal this year. So yeah, Juan Soto, the, con the conversation is going to be, does he want to be a Yankee? That's it. And more than likely, if the Mets offer more money, then yeah, it, it's going to be a tougher decision now. So I still think he ends up back with the Yankees, but yeah, that whole idea that the Mets just stink. So Juan Soto will just never consider him. Well, that that's just now wrong. It's not, well, it's just wrong. And well, you look at the, the Mets lineup and you see, oh, Vientos is hitting 429. You got Lindor doing that. And you're like, and people are like, oh, well, there's no way Soto wouldn't want to play with Judge. It's like, how much do you, how much of an effect do you think a bad another bad postseason from Judge would have on Soto's decision? If the Yankees win the World Series, I think Juan Soto absolutely would say, He's I bad. don't really give a rip. I'll overlook it. We just won mm -hmm. in pinstripes. He would go nowhere. There would be zero... If they win the World Series, he's not leaving, which is why it exactly. makes me laugh when people are like, if you could have him for a year and win the World Series, but he's gone, or have him for 11 years and never win a World it's like, well, if they win a World Series, he's not leaving. Like, right. There's no, no reason if the Mets to. go to the World Series and even lose, and the Yankees don't win the World Series. Like, let's just say the Yankees don't make a World Series, the Mets are in the World Series and then lose. What are you selling Juan Soto on? Explain that to me. Because I actually, I need help having that explained to me. What are you selling? Because you have to remember, when we say, oh, you need to become a Yankee, we're essentially selling that you're going to be a part of a winning tradition. That's because that's what we are. Okay. We have the greatest fan base in the world. 
And that's been built off of winning tradition and expectations. But if you go out and lose for a 15th year in a row and another team goes to the World Series, potentially wins, you offer less money and then your best player in Aaron Judge isn't performing and then all of a sudden Juan Soto's taking a ton of blame and people are complaining about his defense now in the outfield because they don't end up that winning. Was that's what, it was bad. It, the play was bad today. It was really bad. But we are going to spread blame across the roster. And that includes management, the whole nine, if we don't win, right? And they deserve blame. This is a much easier path to the World Series than previous years. If they don't win, it's going to be super negative in New York. It just will be. So it's not going to look that attractive in New York if we don't reach a World Series to which you've actually said. So, yeah, this is not good. Okay. At least this puts pressure on Hal Steinbrenner to be a high bidder. You're not just going to sell him on, come come take a huge discount. You don't want to take all the money in the world to go play with the Mets. They're not winning. Like that, that was what we were talking about six months ago was that that's what the Mets were going to be, very similar to what you saw out of Shohei Otani, right? They wanted to have a conversation with Otani. They wanted to have a conversation with Yamamoto. They had nothing to sell. They didn't have a winning tradition to sell. Now they're winning, right? They're a part yeah. of huge games in October. So it'll be interesting. Obviously, like I tweeted, I really don't give a rip about Juan Soto's contract as of now because – the Yankees have to go out and win because I'll tell you this. If the Yankees lose this year and they don't reach a World Series or win a World Series, I don't know that I'm going to be just freaking out about any one player. I just, I, I really won't. I, that doesn't mean I want players traded or I don't care if Juan Soto leaves, but my mind's just not there yet. I, I just, I don't care about him securing the bag. Secure a title, okay? They, I don't, I don't care about it. I don't. No, I, I agree because right now, I don't know. It's like, say, you know, you're at a, at a wedding or, or no, no, no. Let's say you're at a funeral mm -hmm. and going up to somebody who's grieving and you're like, Hey, did you watch the game last night? Like they don't care about the game last night. They're grieving. They lost a loved one. You know, I just, I feel like talking know, about the, that, the world series. You might be able to ask me. Well, yeah, but you get what I'm saying, though. It's I, like I there's a perfectly. time and a place, and I obviously might be a little grim to even bring that up, but like the point I'm making here is that like right now, they got a World Series to win, okay? I, I don't give a rip about Juan Soto's contract right now. I don't care about him coming back right now. Um, I'm kind of assuming that he's going to, to be honest with you, but I just don't care. I, I All I care about is a world series and that's all any Yankee fan should really be caring about. That's why I can, I keep saying it doesn't matter how they win games as long as they win games. And then people will say, well, Jake, here's the issue with that statement. This could come back and hurt them later on. Their inefficiencies at the dish. I'm not saying you're wrong, but if I'm, what I'm saying is absolute. And I'm saying if they win every game, we'll just say, but it's not pretty. I don't care. That's all I'm saying. I'm not saying that, you know, because we have a podcast to do. We have stuff to talk about. And I'm not saying that Austin Wells three strikeouts isn't a little concerning. I'm not saying Aaron Judge hitting 091 isn't a little concerning. But at the same time, right now, the battle is against the Royals. They're one win away. The Yankees could not be in a better position except maybe if they were up 2-0. They're in the perfect position right now to put this thing away. They get their ace back on the mound. They got Stanton, who is a streaky-ass hitter, and now he's on hopefully a run, right? And we know playoff Stanton has been a problem in the past, a problem in a good way if you're a Yankee fan. Anthony Volpe stepping up in this game, right? And you got a guy like Oswaldo Cabrera walking three times, right? You got Judge who hit the ball pretty hard a couple times. So maybe, maybe That's he's why getting it matters. things going. You know? When you say like you don't care how it happens, I would say if the Yankees win game four, then let's just say they win one to zero. The Yankees get no hit to the ninth inning. They hit a solo bomb and win the game. Am I pissed off about the offense? Yes. Right. But we got the result we needed. We move on. 
right? That's what you're saying. You just want to move along because that's our goal. Our whole goal is to win. The Yankees need to win. It doesn't really matter how, but when people see 0 for 5 from Austin Wells with three strikeouts or they see Aaron Judge, another 0 for, 0 for 4 performance, he's hitting 091 on the series with an ops of 377. When they see these things, they're trying to say, yes, the win matters more than anything. That is technically true. But how do these numbers and what's happened here in the short term, how does that project into what to expect in game four? What do you expect? Do you come into this game in a game four, a huge game for the Yankees, and say, yeah, I expect production out of Austin Wells? Well, based on what you saw today, perhaps you wouldn't, right? So seeing this type of performance offensively just makes you feel like we're in for another stressful game four. And I'm here to tell you guys, we probably are. And I'm making the prediction now. I think Garrett Cole is going to be sensational in this game. I really do. I, I do just too. get that feeling. I know for people who think like I'm this homer, no, I didn't think Carlos Rodon was going to be spectacular. I talked about at the beginning of this series, I am worried about that start. I am absolutely worried about an idea of Carlos Rodon starting a game five at Yankee Stadium, a winner take all. I don't want to see that at all. And you even mentioned that Luis Heal might even be an emergency start in that situation. But you, have to. you would have to. But I'm looking at this situation. Garrett Cole knows this is a huge start. He's had big starts before. He succeeded in some of them. He's failed in others. I'm vouching that Garrett Cole will be sensational. I just believe that. I do. And in large part, there are a few guys at the bottom of the order and Garcia and Frazier who are doing some things in Kansas City's lineup. But there are some key cogs in this lineup, specifically right-handers, that Garrett Cole typically deals with well. And they're struggling. Bobby Witt Jr., right? Perez, essentially all his production was against Rodon. My expectation is that Garrett Cole is going to be in the strike zone early. He is going to dominate this game. The Yankees offense doesn't have to be great. Here's what has to happen. The Yankees walked nine times today. They had four hits. You actually mentioned earlier. I don't. You said, I don't think walks are talked about enough. I actually think walks are just as important as hits. In my opinion... They are not. And the reason for this is because you can get on base and create traffic all you want, but you can't really, for the most part, walk in runs. That's not a that's not a reliable source of run production in October. At some point or another, even if there's a man on third, second, with two outs, there's going to come a point in time where you need a hit. You need to produce a base hit to score multiple runs and put a game out of reach and reward a pitcher for a solid start. And if you don't do that, we get another 0 for 6, the way we saw it with runners in scoring position today. We are in for another 2-1, to 3-2, to 4-2 to two final tomorrow. And, and I, by the time you guys watch this, it'll be today. I don't know if we really want that. I don't. And based on the way our bullpen's throwing, I would say that that helps us in that scenario. But do you guys really want to see that? I don't. I want to see a lineup show up and produce. Garrett Cole needs to be excellent. This offense needs to be good enough. You mentioned the magic number is usually five runs. Give me five runs tomorrow. Let's put it away. Five runs should win it. Like yes. that should be enough. Um, you are going to get their best shot because this is last licks with them. And they are going to be batting last. So, you know, you don't want to keep it close and have them knowing that their season in this run, which has been impressive. I mean, I don't want to take anything away from the Royals. This is a nice little story, but you know, and beating the Orioles was a big deal, but you don't want it to get to the bottom of the ninth and they're starting a rally. You'd like to, you'd, you'd like to be a five, nothing, you know, when that rally starts, but if it's a five, four ball game or it's two to one, you got Bobby Witt jr. At the dish and you know, you got two guys on or whatever. Yeah, I wouldn't want to see that. So if we yeah, win this I, game, Bob Costas might read off a eulogy. He, he, I promise you, you could tell he's trying to be super cerebral with this whole situation, but he's clearly rooting for Kansas City. I, I'm here to tell you right now, for anyone who's watching this broadcast, I don't, I, I had to say that here at the end of the show. Mm -hmm. I have no idea what's going on. I, I wanted to wait for a win. So that way people didn't think like, oh, they're just, they're just pissed off. 
right? They, they wanted Bob Costas to get super excited about what they did well, even though they lost. No, that's not it. We won a huge game today. I was like jumping up and down in a bowling alley watching this game. So no, he is lethargic. John Carlos Stan hit a humongous home run. How are you not loud in that situation? He, he was reading an audio book. Get, have some energy. Where's Matt Vaskersian? Scream, yell. Santa Maria. <laughs> I scream. When you oh, think I say Matt it all the time. you think that grand slam from Francisco Lindor. You think energy, excitement. You need to reflect the energy that we're seeing. And if you're going to be a person who's not, who doesn't bring a ton of over-the-top energy, you better be as good as Vin Scully. And if not, bring some freaking energy for both teams. You're not, he's not on payroll for the other squad. Get excited. I I'd ne- I didn't understand he, it today. I really didn't. I felt like we were the umpires were atrocious today and that check swing from Aaron Judge, he didn't swing, right? Awful. A ball from Glaber Torres down the right field line, in my opinion, hit the chalk. Wrong call. Don't know why we have HD cameras, by the way, the TBS broadcast, they couldn't get a, a real angle to the final six That's seconds pathetic. we got to look at it. What are we doing? They're like, here, do you want to look at the line here? And I'm looking at it like this. I can't see TBS. Yeah, well, TBS has bigger issues because they don't even have anybody that's worth a damn in the broadcast booth. I Not don't like Ron Darling him. either. No, I don't. I think, oh, I, I like think Ron Darling. He clearly wants to go and call the Mets games. I can't blame him. He's been calling the Mets games all year. And but Michael, Michael, K, K, should, Michael K should be allowed to be calling Yankee games. That is true. Michael K brings the energy. He's always had energy for us. I mean, that's a given, right? That's his that's his day job. I I great. Yeah. My thing but that bothers me is when people are like you can't have Michael K else. calling post why? Michael K still brings the effort even when the Yankees yes, get destroyed. Like yep. it actually pisses off the Yankee fans, but it, it's just him doing a good job. I mean, he's aware he is the Yankees voice. He is the announcer. Right. But, you know, if a big, you know, Matt Chapman hits a home run, he'll be like, and that's a three-run shot for the the Giants, and they take a 6-2 lead, and, you know, he'll he'll have some, you know, and that's all you could really ask for. But, yeah, Ron Darling doesn't seem like he wants the Yankees to win either. Um, I just, uh, this has probably been the, the worst broadcast crew that I've heard all year. At least Ron um, Darling's a Mets, like he's a Mets guy. Th- that makes sense to me. What, Bob, what's Costas, Bob Costas should only be announcing the Olympics. That's all he should be doing. I want like, to see yeah. him with Olympic swimming or bat, some badminton. Or if they put yeah. uh, they have table tennis in there. Yeah. But I want to hear Bob Costas when I set my alarm at 4 o'clock in the morning because they're playing in Shanghai. That's I don't want to hear Bob Costas. <laughs> I don't want to hear another negative thing about Joe Buck because everybody's like, Joe Buck is terrible. I would take Joe Buck right now, easily, way better. They also give him so many assignments. I think that's why Joe Buck he is gets so tired, tired, man. He gets so many assignments. They're like, hey, you're going to go announce the Chiefs and the Steelers. He and stop. Then tomorrow, he you're like, going to see the Yankees and Red Sox series. And he'll yeah. just talk about all of it. I'm like, geez. That's why he took the deal with ESPN because they're just like, right. yeah, don't wor- don't worry, bro. You're only going to be calling football games and you'll only do it when there's Monday night football. That's it. That's all you have to do because they had him doing to your point and he would bring it up. He'd be calling, you know, Rams Eagles and in the middle of the game, it'd be like, yeah, and you know, you're going to be without me, uh, Troy, because next week I- or, you know, tomorrow or whatever, I'm going to be doing this. And it's like, yeah, I got a postseason game. I'm going to be gone for, and then he's doing this. And it's like, Tariko's the same thing. Tariko is a freak. He can do everything. He's, I want to see the Yankees talented. win 10 to zero tomorrow. All right. Today, I should say, do you know who I want? The to broadcast I want to see Bob Costas call 10 runs and zero for the other team. Do you, do you know who I want to see broadcast now? I want to see Jim Nance. I think Jim Nance would do a great job. I don't know if he knows baseball. But I feel like we need some postseason Jim Nance. He's fantastic. There, are, I would like to see home broadcasters calling their own games. That's all I would like. If you play, oh, a game I, agree. Home, 
I should be forced to listen to the other team's home broadcast. If the Mets are the home team in the World Series and we play them, I should be forced to listen to Ron Darling. That's the way it should go. And then when you get a game at Yankee Stadium, Michael K is calling the game. I don't want to hear these other broadcasts. And I get it. They basically pimp out the rights and everybody throws up billions of dollars and they earn the right. They bought the right to force us to watch these broadcasts. But man, you've got it. I would say at the bare minimum, you need to get people to call the game that appear like they're not miserable when one of the two teams is doing the scoring or pitching well. You need to remember that while these broadcasts are happening, there are also kids watching these games, trying to figure out who in the world should I be rooting for? And they're going to turn on a game and they really, how can you become a Yankees fan? How can you become a fan of some of these teams that they're just not bringing the energy for? When the broadcast is just in that balls, John Carlos Stan hit a ball 115 today off the left center wall or yesterday, I should say no, it's today. And they acted like it was a squibbed infield single from like Alex Verdugo. It wasn't, it was a huge hit that scored Juan Soto. It was a huge play in this game. You need to reflect that with how you cover the game that. And, and I know like some people, they don't, they, they stay away from this type of stuff and they never criticize these type of people's on uh, these people on shows. I don't really give a rip about it. I think that Bob Costas does a fine job for one team. And then for the other team, you're just, it, it feels like, like he's hired by the other team. I, I didn't, I didn't get it. I wanted to make sure it was talked about. I feel like Bob Costas is really, he's a, he's a great announcer for, a niche thing. Like it has to be like classy events, golf. He'd be fine for Olympics, uh, outside the lines, 30 for 30. If he's a narrator, sign him up. Great narrator. But the problem is he has that narrator voice and he's trying to do play by play and it just doesn't work. So I think that's his biggest issue. Uh, and like I said, I don't care for Ron Darling, but he is astronomically better than John Smoltz, who I will say at one point, John Smoltz was good. And then uh, clearly someone reminded him something about, you know, something, something he lost to the Yankees. And now any Yankees broadcast, he can't get over that they lost the World Series to the Yankees. You can hear him. You could hear like the envy in his voice. Like he seems soured. Yeah. He just, and it's ridiculous. It's like, you know, uh, you are going out there and you have a job to be impartial. And I just don't feel like enough. So the entire reason we don't get Michael K is because the lack of impartial, uh, what they're, that's what they're saying, right? That's the argument that they make. But then we watch these teams and it's like, look, Gary, especially of all people is not somebody that's like, Oh, they hate my team. You're not a normie. You know, you're not like, Oh, everybody's out to get us. You don't believe in the Yankee tax and neither do I. Cause we explained, we de- debunked that the Yankee tax doesn't exist. The prospects aren't that good. That's what we said. Right. But the reality is that we can be impartial in that regard and be open and honest. But when you see it, it is clear as day. This isn't just Yankee fans. Gary and I are seeing this as well. So it's not just you at home. There are people that are also like not biased and stuff. And they're, I've had people be like, yo, does Bob Costas hate the Yankees? Like not Yankee fans, right? It's like, what the hell is he talking about? Like, this is terrible. So yeah, I agree. Has to be better. Um, luckily I'll check right now, but I don't think the ALCS is on TBS. I think it's just is it on, on Fox. Is it on Fox? I was going to guess that now. Fox has a completely new team. So it would be, I think Joe Davis and Smoltz would do one. And I don't know who would do the other. Oh, never mind. We all lost. Fox gets NLCS. ALCS is TBS. Are you joking me? I'm not kidding you. Wait, so you mean to tell me that I'm going to be watching. I'm going to be watching a championship series potentially, right? It's not over yet. Yeah. A game six, a Yankee Stadium with Bob Costas. Seven, a Yankee Stadium with Bob Costas. <laughs> Dude, this is so. This is just poor. Who, who thought of this? Who was like, well, again, it sounds good on paper. Bob Costas is legendary, right? He really is. Like a lot of people know him. 
for being that like legendary narrator voice, but so is Al Michaels. And I love Al Michaels to death. He's one of my all time favorites, but I mean, I want you, we all saw Super Bowl 56. Aaron Donald made the, the play on Joe Burrow and Al Michaels didn't even know the game was over. I, I said that to you. Remember? He's like, he, he had no voice. idea. Morgan Freeman has a good voice. I don't want him calling game seven of the world series, at Yankee stadium. I need I energy and someone who Can, knows the game as well. I would take Morgan uh, Freeman at this point in Oct- on October 10th, uh, game four. I would, I would do it. Why, why not? Why, why not? I mean, I could pretend for a second. We're talking about what the hell, the penguin thing that he narrated, but I, I don't know. I just, I want <laughs> energy. I want well, I the energy that's reflected at my house. I want that energy on the broadcast. Matt Vaskersian would actually be my call. I, well, I know Matt that there are is a no brainer. Yeah, but I then, love yeah. Matt Vaskersian. The dude, you can say what you want about his voice and hearing him in MLB The Show. Whether or not you're sick of that, don't care. Well, All MLB The Show got rid of him. So, and it's gone they downhill did. since. Yeah, they did. They had their worst year yet. But I will say, I just want, and this isn't even a Yankee thing. If Bob Costas is calling, if the Yankees are eliminated, there's going to be a team that he wants to win and a team that he doesn't. He's going to call that team, and it's going to be hard to watch because maybe I want the other team to win, and the broadcast is making it seem like I'm the only one. I'm by myself in that whole idea. I'm not. We need uh, we need old school, uh, like the WWE announcers, where there's a heel and then there's a face. So there's a good guy and a bad guy. And the bad guy is always like totally ridiculous. Like it's always like rooting against like the good guy and the, the good guys, the good announcers always rooting against the bad guy. It's so funny. Actually, the good announcer is normally impartial. They try to stay impartial and kind of leans towards the good guy. Yeah, I'd rather yeah. have something like that. I think that'd be more fun than this. Just True. have like... Yeah. And- you have one guy in the booth who's like rooting for the Yankees. You have another guy in the booth who's rooting. I think that'd be kind of funny. <laughs> yeah. It, you put Michael K in there. I uh, Michael K and hmm, what would be the perfect booth? Because I mean Michael K and Matt Vaskersion, they do the same thing. But Michael K is so knowledgeable about baseball that he could literally do color now, if we're being honest. Like in addition, like you know how you get like, your Aikman and and um, your your Aikman and, and Joe Buck, but Joe Buck is really knowledgeable about what he's talking about. Like I I feel like it's gotten to that point with Michael K where you could just throw him in a booth with another. Well, I just like yes, this broadcast already in itself because they actually argue. <laughs> like they, that's the that's what I like. <laughs> John Flaherty. Like, that was yeah. weird. <laughs> It was it was funny because <laughs> and I know in the media they're gonna say, Oh yeah, we love each other. I, I don't doubt that. But oh, no. it was so but funny. They have the nerve to argue with each other. Michael K has the nerve to really go at anybody. He does. Oh, man. As long as he really believes something, he'll say that. And so what? But then also if the other team does something that he didn't want to happen. Like, as you said, Oh, Matt Chapman hit a grand slam in the ninth inning. Well, the giants fan might be watching that game. He brings it. He doesn't just go. And that ball is a fly ball to right field. No, it's a big moment. It's a huge moment and it's listened to worldwide. So yeah, I love broadcasters. I don't, it's so funny talking about these guys because they're so hated, right? Yeah. These I, guys are so hated. Just like put Michael, Michael K, K and a widely hated. And then there's also care. a huge group of people that love this dude. And it's like, it's such a polar, it's a polarizing job. So if anyone ever asked me to be a announcer, I'll tell them absolutely not, which I guess technically when this podcast explodes, we'll be very hated as well, but not quite as much as the home broadcasters. Well, I don't know, man, if we were asked to guest announce and we could do play by play in color, I think I would do that with you. Yeah. Cause people would know we're not, I don't, well, I don't know if, but you have to remember people are asking for that. So like if someone said, Hey, go, go do commentary on your YouTube show. And we had a huge audience. Then those people are deliberately approaching you to do this. So that audience is very different. But remember, there are a lot of Yankees fans who are like, I want somebody else to be the broadcaster for what, like 
right? They have that opinion. You don't have a choice in that matter. You have that certain broadcaster. So they may not have asked for that. So in large part, no matter how good you are at the job, unless you're Vin Scully, you will be hated by a lot of people. I feel like that's an opportunity for us to do that sometime. We do a live stream and we just broadcast our own. I'd do it. I don't know how we'd get it to work. Like, I don't know how the rules are because I see people all the time have like the game up while they're talking. So I guess it's allowed, but we would end up being delayed. And then, well, if we have cable, we can make it work, but we'd be delayed and people would just be going, they'd be reminding us in the chat every 10 seconds. You're behind 30 seconds. You're behind. (laughs) We know. I know I'm behind. I, so I, I've done announcing before, um, for post or not postseason preseason football um i used to do that and it actually worked out pretty well and people thought that i did a nice job but i don't know i mean if like a network came out and was like hey gary and jake we want you to like for whatever reason announce the next yankee game will you do it i'd if say Michael yeah. K asked me to come on i would come on oh yeah absolutely but like would you do it too much trouble on twitter but he, oh yeah i could do it yeah, we we don't need to put you in the spotlight there. Everyone will come after you. <laughs> <laughs> They'd be, you know, it's funny. They wouldn't come after me. They'd come after the people at Yes. Because a lot of the people who do watch. Yes would get canceled. Yeah, you're right. They get canceled. They'd have their 12 minutes. They'd have their 12 minutes in the rain. And then Amazon, they'd, Amazon they'd, they'd would wake up the next a, morning and remember that the people on Twitter don't ever matter. And they never did. Yeah. Oh, so Amazon wouldn't come out and release a statement about how we're publicly sorry that we brought on Gary Sheffield Jr. who <laughs> hates kittens. I don't know. <laughs> like, I hate like, my. I hate people like me. That that's <laughs> <laughs> people are fool. They they're, they're fools. So yeah, yeah, they would never bring me on. You have a chance. We'll see. We'll see. I don't. I don't know. Do we have what any I mailbags? Mean, by the way. We do. Uh, we. Oh, I should have remembered who did it. Now I have to look it up. It was Nick Gomes. And this is a doom and gloom one. Somewhat. Okay. I mean, it is, but, you know. Nick Gomes. I know it might be a little premature to have this discussion. That's very premature. But if the Yankees are eliminated from the playoffs by a Royals team that ranked 13 in runs scored and 14 in OPS during the regular season, should Aaron Boone face serious consequences? Absolutely. I don't care where the Royals are ranked. I've been very clear. If Aaron Boone ever asked me, hey, what what can I do to make you believe in me or, or feel good about me or get off my back? Well, I'm never getting off your back. Like if you ever asked me that, I'd be like, I'm just gonna call like you're the human backpack. Yeah, but but what? I, well, I will get off his back to a degree. I will still criticize Sean McVay's won a Super Bowl. I still criticize Sean McVay all the time, and I love the guy. Right. Okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna do my job. Now with Aaron Boone, the parameters have been set. I'm not asking for a World Series win. I'm asking for at least a World Series. That's it. Yeah. That's all I'm asking for. You basically win this series. And you win the next series. And guess what? I don't think Aaron Boone should be fired. But if Aaron Boone loses in this series or next series, that tells me it's been eight years, right? He has not ever gotten to the World Series with a $300 million payroll, with one of the best bullpens in this uh, playoff, because right now they've been dominant. They have maybe one of the best, if not the best rotation left standing. And they have all these talent, you know, these talented hitters and everything. One could say, yeah, the players have to go out there and do their thing. And that's sure. true. But at the the same thing is, well, you had Alex Verdugo today go over three, right? He's hitting 300. But when you look at it, Alex Verdugo, right, had a great first game and is one for seven since. And you have Jason Dominguez who hasn't gotten any opportunities. So if Alex Verdugo continued to not hit or like just, you know, didn't hit moving on. Well, what I would say, Gary is, well, you got to put Jason Dominguez in there. Right. But if you don't go and do that and you lose because you continue to do the same things, see how that becomes your problem. That's not just, Oh yeah. The players weren't hitting. You have 15 hitters on this roster. 
So if at any point guys aren't hitting, you can go to the bench. Yeah, there are certain plenty. calls that have to be made correctly. One mm -hmm. of the calls was Jason Dominguez versus John Carlos Stan. That was a call a lot of us were trying to make at DH because they say we don't necessarily trust his glove in left field as much as we trust Alex Verdugo. And Verdugo has a pedigree in the postseason. That's all true. Yeah. And they rolled, Aaron Boone specifically, rolled with John Carlos Stan. And it paid off in a huge way. It's the only reason we won this game was because John Carlos Stan Absolutely. played. Okay, so decisions like that, which this is the reason we're not the manager, is that if you make those choices correctly, you put players in the best position to succeed, and then we go succeed, we're going to give you the credit. We're Matter of fact, we're waiting to give you the credit. We want to. We don't. I don't want to deal with finding another manager because I promise you a better manager is probably not even out there for the taking. There, there's not that many great managers that does – many people that deserve to be manager of the Yankees. It takes a special type of person. So we're rooting for Aaron Boone. We are. I, I want am, yeah. this to work. We didn't run a podcast for the Yankees in hoping that our manager would get fired after blowing the American League Division Series to one wow. of the worst teams we played in October in 10 years. They just are. Kansas City is not a great team. They're not. I don't know why we have to sit here and pretend that they are. They are not that. Okay. This is a good team. We should be better. We are a better team. Go prove that. And then after this, you go play Cleveland. You go play Detroit. You mean to tell me that either of those two teams are on the same field as the Yankees? They're not close. They're they're not. They deserve credit for what they've done up until this point. We are a better team. Great teams still play good teams, and they need to beat those good teams. That's who we are. And maybe some people don't think we're a great team. That's fine. We're still better than all the teams remaining in the American League. That is just all that is. So go out and perform. So yeah, to answer the question directly, if we lost this series, we'd be talking about Aaron Boone. No doubt about it, but we just won this game. So I know when this question was asked was a little bit earlier, just to be fair here. But yeah, yeah we won this game. The Yankees are a win away from the championship series. So let's hope for a win. And that way we don't have to talk about Aaron Boone being fired. I would love that. I would too. So the Yankees are a haymaker away from knocking out the lights of the Royals. So I'm going to go with Creed. Let's oh, go great with movie. great movie. Um, the third one was really good. The second one was really good. We're going to stick with just Creed. Put Creed in the comment section below if you uh, stuck around for this. And if you haven't watched it, check it out. Like, Boxing movies are kind of far-fetched. I get it. They don't but, play any defense in those movies. Well, <laughs> I'll say this. <laughs> to be fair, Adonis Creed shows more, <laughs> I guess, <laughs> like wherewithal than Rocky Balboa. Because Rocky Balboa is like, hey, Adrian. <laughs> it's like Adonis no is defense. at least somewhat trying to do a Philly shell or something. They but, did a better job in this series. Creed's a great movie. Yes. They did a better job in this series proving that at some point or another, you can block a punch. That is an option on the table because I know this is not real boxing and you wouldn't watch a movie that takes 45 minutes to get through every fight scene watching a bunch of blocking and defense. We get that. But yeah. Creed, the way they did it, great movie. I also highly recommend. Yeah, and Michael B. Jordan is just upper echelon level actor. He could do pretty much any role at this point. So if you haven't watched it, definitely go and do that. And then if you're not doing anything after that, watch the second and third one. Like they're fantastic movies as well. I really love that series. Warning. This is Michael B. Jordan starring. So don't bring your wives or girlfriends. It's, it won't work <laughs> out well for you. You're, you're not going to like what you hear. That's funny. Um, also, this is in no way, shape, or form hating on Rocky. What I was just saying, uh, I love Rocky. And to be fair, the Creed series is based on Rocky. It's a spinoff. It's uh, Apollo Creed's son. So it's really cool. And I like that they took it in a way, instead of just being like, yeah, we got no ideas, Gary. We have no ideas of anything to make anymore, so let's just reboot Rocky Balboa. They're like, oh, let's take something that could have actually happened in the series and let's turn it into the rest of our story, and there you go.
they should have rebooted Rocky, like <laughs> made made, made the, a Rocky whatever the next uh, the next uh, installment of Rocky, and then re uh, recast it with like Jake Paul or something. Just pissed everybody <laughs> off. <laughs> and like Sylvester Stallone plays like uh, the the trainer. <laughs> Like, yeah, play the trainer and Jake Paul's just in, in the ring. Just piss off, old man. Just oh pisses off everybody. The entire point of the movie is just to piss off all the old Rocky. <laughs> oh, it doesn't even take place in Philly. It's in like Ohio. <laughs> no, it's actually in Atlantic City. We're, we're going to do it oh, in Atlantic yeah. City. They're, they're going to oh, go to Vegas God. and just gamble all the money that they win gambling on themselves. Yeah, but no, oh, back to your God. point. Creed is great. Garrett Cole on the mound, which will be tonight when you're watching the show. <laughs> At 8.08 p.m. Eastern Time, if I'm not mistaken. I like it. I like the older, uh, the older, the later uh, times. So, yeah. Yeah, it's time. They're one haymaker away. Knock them out. Knock their lights out. And uh, you move on to the ALCS to play either the Tigers or Guardians. That's going to do it. Be sure to like, subscribe, and comment. Special thanks. Field level shouts. Wants to paint a kid from LI, uh, kid from LI, Carlos Moreau, Jeff J, Ed W, Brian Fuchs, Ryan Hoffman, Rich Squires, Joshua Halleckman, Egyptian Magician, Nick Gomes, Jalen Sestero, JT Roberts, Mickey G, Ronnie, Tony Jones, and Insight. We appreciate you guys. If you want to become a member down below, link is in the description and there's a button below. Be sure again to check us out on all audio podcast platforms. Check out our Discord if you want to do a 24-7 Yankees channel where you could nonstop talk about the Yankees. Discord is below, and we will see you guys in the next episode. You guys take care. Like this video.